My Vision Express 2014 is introducing changes to the EMR. Layout and setup have been added or modified. Workflow has improved for a quicker exam. You can also link diagnosis to findings in the refractive, external, internal, test, or contact lens tab. The PKRS wizard has also been added in the assessment tab. In this video, we're going to go over ways to access the EMR. We're going to go over the new summary tab, the complaint tab features, the health tab and its sub-tabs, the entrance tab layout, refractive tab workflow, external internal tab layout, contact lens tab layout, the test tab features, and assessment tab features. First, we'll begin with how to access the exam. The first way is going to be through the patient profile on the top of the toolbar. You can either search for the patient on the top or you can choose from your history list. Once you're in the patient profile, you have the history tab, which is broken down into four sub-tabs, including the exam sub-tab. From here, you can open up any existing exams. You can also click on add to add an exam from here. Now, once you click on add, it is going to prompt you to choose an exam template. You also have the choice to not choose a template. What this will do, it will display all the available tabs in the exam. It will have no default values. Another way that you can access the exam is through the exam module on the top of the toolbar. Now from here, you have four radio buttons. The first one is going to display all the exams that were open today. The search radio button will allow you to search for any existing exams. On the top, you have the search criteria, so you can search by either, pa by either patient number, last name, first name, date of birth, even the physician who saw the patient or the type of exam that was performed. The third radio button is the template radio button. This will allow you to first choose the template that you want to use, and then it will allow you to search for the patient, or you can choose from the history list. If you ever see this prompt, it's just stating that an exam has already been created for today, and it's asking if you'd like to create a new one. The last radio button is your appointments radio button. This will display all the appointments that are booked today, you can see their appointment time, you can see what they're coming in for, as well as the status, if they're checked in, or if they're late, or if they no-showed. You'll choose that patient, and then it's going to prompt you to choose the exam template, and you'll go straight to the exam. Compared to My Vision Express 10.0, patient reported problem list and diagnosis list has been added to the summary tab. The medication section is separated by in-house and outside prescriptions. There's also refractive and contact lens information that's been added. Also, aided and unaided visual acuity and dilation information. Now, before I begin with the actual summary tab, I want to show you a few things. First, on the top, it will display the type of exam that you're performing today. If you ever chose the wrong template or if the exam just changed from a comprehensive to an office visit, you can always change the type by this drop down here. So rather than a comprehensive exam, if it was really a contact lens exam, you'll see that change will reflect on the top. The same will apply with these two radio buttons, whether the patient is actually established or new. Now, if there's a tab that you do not need in this exam or you need in this exam, you can always right click, which will have this box appear. And then from here, you can remove any tabs that you do not need. And of course, bring back any tabs that you need. Now, the summary tab is going to display certain information that was done or documented in the previous exam. You have your problem list, from what the patient reported as well as what you found in the previous exams. You have the medication list broken up into in-house or outside. You have the allergy list, intraocular pressure history, dilation history, and family history. 
as well as refractive contact lens history. Test history. This will display any tests that were performed on the patient, as well as any findings and any plans. You have visual acuity history, which is actually coming from the entrance tab, bring it down to aided or unaided visual acuities. You have ocular surgery history, and then finally, the appointments history. This will display when the appointment was booked for, the start time, if there was any confirmation, if the patient no-showed, the physician who saw the patient, as well as any services rendered and notes. On the top, you have several sections. You have the exam date, the physician who's seeing the patient. If the patient was referred to your office from an outside physician, you can document this. If the patient is a minor, you can document who they were accompanied by, as well as the relationship to the patient. You can also document the last complete eye exam. Now this date and exam number is coming from the previous exam date. If it's a brand new patient, this will be left blank and you can type in when their last exam was. Finally, you have the last exam location. Now the next tab is the complaint tab. You have your reason for visit in the form of a drop down. If it's just if the patient's just here for an annual eye exam, then you can choose from the drop down. Otherwise, if you click on the ellipses button, then you can choose more than one reason. So if they're here for an annual eye exam and they're also here for a LASIK consult, then you can add more than one reason. Now, if the reason is not available in this list and it's unique, then you can always type in the reason for visit. Now, if the patient has a complaint, like they have dryness, and it's in their right eye and it comes and goes, and it's while they're working on the computer, you can see that as I'm going through each category, it's creating my complaint on the top. This is our HPI Builder. Now, if you don't want to use the HPI Builder, you feel more comfortable free texting what that complaint is. You can always click on any one of these pound signs, so that way you can create customize your own note, your own complaint. You do also have the option of clicking on you, which will give you a brand new line, and you can unlock that line, so that way you can modify it and create your own complaint on this line. Now, just a warning. If you were to free text anything, but use any one of the categories in the HPI Builder, it does overwrite that information. You have two available checkboxes. The top is your chief complaint, which if you do have more than one complaint that you've documented, and you'd want to have a specific line as that chief complaint, then you can just merely select it and then check off chief complaint. You also have a history checkbox, which will display any previous complaints in gray. You can also select it, and you can copy it forward to the new exam. Now, with the complaint tab, a questionnaire section has been added. The setup is required through File, Setup, Exam, and Questionnaire. I mentioned before the unlock feature. Once again, it is to prevent information from being overwritten by the HBI Builder. We also have a signature stamp that's been added. So we'll start off with the questionnaire. When you click on the questionnaire radio button, and of course these questions can definitely be customized by you or the user, you can see here all the questions that I have so far. So if you want to know if they use computers, how long they've been on them, and the usage and ergonomics, then you can free text what that answer is. You can also click on the ellipses button and then add multiple choices or multiple answers. Now you do also have a signature button here, so if you do want to sign when this complaint was reviewed, then you can go ahead and click on the sign button and it'll document that for you. Now the next tab is the health tab. 
It is broken down into several subtabs, starting with your medication subtab. Throughout the health tab, you'll notice that there are two radio buttons which will display any active medications, allergies, problems, family history, or the all radio button will display both inactive problems, medication, allergy, and family history. In the medication subtab, you also have three radio buttons, so you can display both in-house and outside prescriptions, or just in-house prescriptions, or just outside prescriptions. You can also show any orders or any medication orders. If there are no active medications, then you do have the no active medications checkbox that is checked off. This is coming from the previous exam. Now, if there is a medication that you would like to add, whether it's outside or in-house, you would just click on add. It's going to have this Rx Terms code pop-up, which will allow you to search for the medication. So if my patient was on Zalatan, I can just go ahead and type that medication name in, and then it'll find the medication for me, and I can select it and bring it over to my Rx pad. Now, if it's an outside prescription, then you can check off outside Rx. That way, it doesn't tie it into the doctor's name. Or if it's an over-the-counter medication, then you can check off the over-the-counter checkbox. You have the available fields here. You have the prescription date, the expiration date, the discontinued date if it was administered in this office. You have the medication name, of course. And if it's an outside prescription and the patient's not really sure of what the medication name is, you can always free tax what the patient is using the medication for. You have your strength, your route, dispense and number and dosage. You have frequency, duration and type, any refills. If you want no substitutions, you can check off dispense as written. You also have a section here for any instructions that you would like to give the, to the pharmacy or even the patient. These instructions, of course, will print out on the Rx pad. You also have a note section here. This will be for internal use if needed. On the bottom, you have several buttons that are available. You have the add another button, which will merely just give me a fresh new Rx pad. You have the copy button, which will of course duplicate the prescription. You have the delete button, the e-prescribe button, which will take you to our vendor, Dr. First, and it will allow you to write prescriptions through Dr. First and send it electronically to the patient's pharmacy. You can also import medication history so long as that patient's outside physician um, used an e-prescribe company to write the prescription, regardless of the vendor. You have the print button, which will of course print out the prescription. You have done and you have cancel. On the side, you do have the same available buttons. You also do have an email button, a fax button, an education button, which will allow you to add any educational material and provide it to the patient. You also have a history section here. So if you'd like to know the last time that you reviewed their medication list, you can click on the reviewed button. It will date and time when it was reviewed. Now the next tab is the allergies tab. Once again, you have the active and the all radio button that will be displayed. You also have the choice to document no known allergies or no known medication allergies. Now, if you'd like to add an allergy, just click add. You do have two different allergy types. You have drug and other. And on the bottom, you can document what that allergy is. So if my patient is allergic to Advil, you have your status. You also have the reaction pick list. Once you've selected your reaction, you can click on Update Reactions, and it's updated on the top. The next tab is the Problem List tab. Think of this tab as what the patient is reporting. Anything that you find in the examination will actually be documented in the Assessment tab. Now, if you want to add a problem to this list, you'll just click on Add, and you can search for the problem. So if my patient says that they have hypertension, then I can go ahead and type in hypertension. 
and I can select the problem and bring it forward to the exam. If it is ocular, you can specify which eye is affected, and then of course you have your status. The next tab is your vital signs. To add vital signs, you'll just click add, and then you'll just fill in the appropriate fields. You have systolic and diastolic, you also have height and weight, the measure type, whether it was reported, the weight and the measure type for the weight, and the BMI that's automatically calculated for you. Now the next tab is past family social history. In this tab, you can document social history. So if they're a smoker, you can also ask if they've used tobacco in the last 30 days or if they've used smokeless tobacco products in the last 30 days. You can add any additional notes that you'd like to. You can add drugs, alcohol, other, and counseling type. You also have this copy from history button. Now this is going to display information that was documented in previous exams. If you'd like to copy that forward to the current exam, you would just select the previous exam date, click select, and then it'll bring it forward to the new exam. Now once this page has been reviewed, you do have the checkbox PFSH reviewed. The next tab is the family tab. If you'd like to add to the family history tab, You'll just click add and you can add either from the drop down or you can search for the diagnosis by just typing in, for example, glaucoma. You can select the timeline and of course the relationship to the patient. The last few tabs I'm not going to go over. These are related to meaningful use and so that we are EHR certified. I'm going to move on to review of systems. You have the status in the form of a drop-down, so if it exists or not reviewed, or if all systems are reviewed and negative. You also have the date of which it was reviewed and the checkbox. Now if there's anything to document in the Review of Systems tab, you do have it in the form of a drop-down. So if my patient has hair and nail changes, then you can document it that way. Or if there's more than one to document, you have the ellipsis button that's available. So if my patient has a murmur and they also have a pacemaker, you can add more than one that's being reported. If it's something that's unique and it's not available in that list, you can always free type what that, what that binding is. You have these hot buttons on the side. You have the all negative button, which will display everything as negative. You have the all other negative button, which will display all the other findings as negative. And you have the clear all review of systems button, which will clear everything out for you. You have a copy from history button that is available as well, so you can view previous exam dates and what was documented in them. If there's been no change, then you can copy that forward to the new exam. On the bottom, you have a section so you can add any surgical procedures. You can document which eye was performed on, the timeline, and also the physician who performed the surgery. You have a no prior ocular surgical procedure reported checkbox available as well. Last, you have a note section for review of systems. Now the next tab is the entrance tab. You have a section here for unaided or aided visual acuities. You have two radio buttons which are available for those aided acuities. You also have a section here for any visual acuity notes. You can choose from the drop down or you can type in what those notes are. You can also document the dominant eye, confrontation visual fields, and pupils. You have it, you can either type it in or you can click on the ellipsis button and you can add more than one finding, of course. You have iris color, EOM, your cover test, your color vision. You have stereopsis as well. You have pupillary distance. You have NPC, break and recovery, and you have psychiatric information. 
On the bottom, you have a section for intraocular pressures. When you click on Add, it does date and time when those pressures were taken. You can also type in the actual pressures or choose from the drop-down. You can document the type of test, whether it was NCT or application, the category, or any notes that you'd like to add. You have a history checkbox that's available so you can view any previous uh, pressures that were taken. You also have a graph. Now this graph can display all the pressures that were taken over the visits. It'll also display information like tonometry, picometry, blood pressure, and medications that the patient is on. Last but not least, you have a section here for any entrance notes. Now in the refractive tab, previous refraction information is displayed by default. A copy forward feature has been added, as well as a new keratometry feature. Compared to 10.0, the Add Vision Diagnosis has been removed and added to the Available Diagnosis feature in the Assessment tab. And final refractive detailed information options have been added as well. Now in the Refractive tab, it defaults to the All Radio button. This will be able to show you both current and any past prescriptions. When adding a prescription, you would just click on Add, and you can choose from the drop-down or the RX type. You have anywhere from presenting all the way down to final. You can also document the usage and even the lens style of the pair. You can also document the usage and the lens style. On the bottom, you have a section for any notes that you'd like to add. You can also document any prism information, also, visu also visual acuity information. You have several buttons that are available. You, of course, have the delete button. You can add as many prescriptions as you'd like. You have the delete button. You have the copy button, which will copy and duplicate the prescription. So if I add an objective prescription, if I click copy, then it'll just duplicate that prescription for me. Now, if I were to add a manifest prescription, if I click on the copy forward button, what this will do, and this is a, done through setup, is you can copy that prescription, but it will change the type of prescription. So for in this example, if I chose my manifest prescription to copy forward, the way I've had it set up, it's going to copy forward to the finalized prescription. So you'll see that this prescription has actually been duplicated, but the Rx type has changed. You have the print button, which will print the prescription out for you. And any notes that you add in that prescription will actually print out as well. You have the transfer to patient Rx button, which will transfer this prescription over to the patient Rx tab of the patient profile. This will make it nice and easy for your front staff or your opticians to quickly have access to this prescription without having access to the exam. You have the order button, which will take you to an order screen. You have keratometry information here. You have everything in the form of a drop down. You also have another section for keratometry on the bottom here as well as a graph. You have pupillary distance, which is available in both the refractive and the entrance tab. The next tab is the binocular tab. You have your phorias, you have your binocular cross sill, NRA and PRA, you have your virgins, you have your NPA, your pursuits, cades, your fusion, and ba binocular balance testing, as well as ACA ratio, and then of course any additional notes. The next tab is the external tab. Now with the external and the internal tab, the layout of the tabs have changed. The notes section moved to the notes button. CD and AV ratio is included in the internal tab categories. The exam method triggers the dilation and pharmaceuticals used. You can now link diagnosis to a finding. 
and the dilation section has been removed from the internal tab and moved to the top of the exam. Now the external tab has the same functionalities as the internal tab. With the external tab you have everything in the form of a drop down. So if there's a Nevis to be documented then I can go ahead and choose from that drop down. If there's more than one to add then I can click on the ellipses button and I can add more than one finding. So on top of my Nevis I have a lesion as well and I can document that. Now if there's something that's not available in that list and it's unique then you can go ahead and type in your finding or any notes that you need to add. You have these available arrows on the side so if with my tear film if I want to carry that over to the opposite eye I can click on the arrow and I'll carry it over to my left eye. If I have the same exact findings in the left eye I can always click on this OS equals OD button which will quickly transfer everything over to the opposite eye. You have the all normal button which is available. This will display all your other findings as normal. You have the all normal button which will display everything as normal. You have your clear all button which will clear everything out for you. You also have your history button which will allow you to view previous exam dates and what was documented in them. You can copy just the right eye, the left eye, or even both eyes to the new exam. You have a notes section here which you can of course modify just by clicking any section on the notes and then typing your notes. You have a drawing feature that's available. Now with the drawing feature you have the pen on the top so you can make any drawings that you need to. You also have the AB text box. So when you click on this AB text box and you click anywhere on the drawing and drag, you can create your text box and you can add your notes. On the side, you have your stamps. So if you want to indicate that there's a dry sandy feeling on this eye, then you can double click on the stamp and then drag it over to the drawing. If there's any figures that you need to add, like this ellipse, you can just click on the ellipse and then you can create your drawing. You have the undo button, so if you want to go back and undo anything you can. If you went too far back, you can redo it. You can also clear everything out. Another feature that we have is this copy forward button. So you can select any previous drawings that were documented and you can copy that forward to the exam. On the bottom you have a section for pachymetry. You also do have another section for intraocular pressures. Now going into the internal tab, once again you have the same functionalities as the external tab. You have everything in the form of a drop down. You also have the arrows which will carry over to the opposite eye. You have a section now here for CD ratio and AV ratio. If there's more than one finding you can click on the ellipses button and then you can add more than one. If it's something that's unique and not available in that list then you can go ahead and type in that note. On the top you have the exam method. Now done through setup you can link an exam method to a dilation drop and trigger the dilation. So if I were to choose the 78D lens my dilation is now triggered as well as the pharmaceuticals that I typically used. On the bottom you have the same available buttons. You have the all other normal, the all normal button. You can clear everything out. You can have the left eye equivalent to the right eye. You have your history button which will allow you to view previous exam dates and what was documented in them. You can copy just the right, the left, or both eyes to the exam. You have the notes section which of course you can change and modify. You have the drawing feature and you have a CD ratio graph that's available.
Next is the contact lens tab. Now compared to My Vision Express 10.0, a new trial feature has been added to allow documentation of more than one trial. Also important contact lens information is now highlighted, such as base curve and diameter. The layout of the contact lens tab has changed a little bit. And also replenishment schedule and contact lens care now transfers over to the order screen. Now as you can see in the contact lens tab, it is broken down into three sub tabs, including the summary tab. The summary tab will display both previous and current prescriptions that have been documented in the exam. On the bottom, you have several buttons that are available. You have the Add button, Modify button, Delete, Copy, Print, Copy RX, which will just simply duplicate the prescription, Copy All, which will duplicate the prescription and any findings that were documented in the Detail tab, Transfer to Patient RX, which will make that prescription available in the Vision RX tab of the patient profile, and last but not least, the Order button, which will take you to an order screen. Now when I add a prescription, it takes me to the Detail tab. On the top, you have two radio buttons, which will display any RGP information that needs to be added, or soft contact lenses. You have the RX type in the form of a drop-down, so you can add any presenting, any trial, or finalized prescriptions. The trial with the pound sign will simply allow you to add more than one trial and label it as so. If you'd like to add a prescription, you'll just click on the ellipses button, and then you can choose from your inventory list. Now you can also filter with the manufacturer. So if I only wanted to prescribe a Bosch and Lohm lens, and we'll choose Pure Vision 2 for an example, then you can filter that way. Now when I choose my Pure Vision 2, you'll see that all my configurations are available, including base curve diameter, and of course the prescription. You can choose from here the appropriate prescription, I just double clicked and it transfers that information over to my contact lens tab. I have the OS equals OD button which will transfer any findings from the right eye over to the left eye. On the top you have lens worn on so if a patient is only wearing a lens in one eye then you can go ahead and select that eye and it will make the opposite eye disappear. You can also select if its monovision distance on the bottom, you have centration, movement, coverage, surface, as well as rotation. You have an equals button, which will transfer that information over to the opposite eye. You also have visual acuity information here, sphere cylinder over refraction information that you can document, including the visual acuities, and sphere over refraction. You have a section here for a replacement schedule. It's in the form of a drop-down. You have today's wearing time, also contact lens care that you recommend. You have an internal note section, and you also have a plan section. Now this plan will also transfer over to the assessment tab. And when you print out the prescription, the plan will also be displayed. On the bottom, you have several buttons that are available. You have a Copy from Refractive button, which will allow you to view all the refractions from the Refractive tab. And you can actually copy this information forward to the Contact Lens tab. You have the Copy RX button, which will allow you to duplicate the prescription. You have the Copy All button, which will duplicate the prescription, as well as the findings. You have a transpose button available, print button. You have a drawing feature that's available here as well. You have a transfer to patient RX button, which will only be displayed or allowed to be clicked on when the prescription is final. This will of course transfer the information over to the Vision RX tab of the patient profile and you'll see that once the button has been clicked the transfer to patient checkbox is now checked. 
you have the order button which will of course take you to an order screen the contact lens order history tab will allow you to view if the patient ordered any boxes from your office you'll see when they ordered how much they ordered and how often they ordered the next tab is the test tab now with the test tab you can link a diagnosis and a procedure to a test a copy feature has also been added and an add another test feature has been added you can link a diagnosis and also assessment to procedures now going into the test tab if you want to add a test you'll just click on add the test details window opens up and from here you can select the test that you'd like to perform on the patient it's in the form of a drop down you can choose the test type also the instrument which eye you're performing the test on the reason for the test which everything is in the form of a drop down you can also free text if you'd like you have the ordered tested and reviewed check boxes that are available now the initials are coming from whoever is signed into my vision express you have the lens power used pharmaceuticals used reliability stability patient cooperation diagnosis as well if there is a diagnosis that's attached to this test then you can always add that diagnosis it will prompt you if you'd like to add the charges for the test as well as the diagnosis this information will actually carry over to the assessment tab any plans that you enter as well will transfer over to the assessment tab as well you can document any findings plans and then any additional notes on the bottom you have several buttons that are available you have the drawing feature you have the add another button which will allow you to add another test you have the copy button which will duplicate the test and you have OK and then cancel on the bottom you have a procedure section so if there are any procedures that are done in-house you would just click add choose from the drop-down you can also free text you can specify which eye it was performed on any notes that you like to add you can also attach a diagnosis this will once again prompt you to add this diagnosis over to the assessment tab The next tab is the low vision tab. From here, you can add any task analysis. You can add any power, devices, vision, and usage. You have glare control, computer modification. You have prescribed aids and glasses. And you have assessment and plans on the bottom. The next tab is the assessment tab. Now in the assessment tab you can see that there are two diagnosis and plans that actually pulled from the test tab. Now you also do have this available button. What this will do, it will pick up any diagnosis that was found in either the refractive tab, contact lens tab, or even the external or internal tab. So if I click on here you'll see that based off of information that I have entered in either one of the tabs that I mentioned before I have these diagnosis now you can either select all of them or you can just select the ones that you want to be carried over click import I'll carry it over to the assessment tab it's always going it's also going to prompt you uh, to add the refractive charge if you would like to the plan from the available button will actually transfer over from any plans that you entered in the contact lens tab as I mentioned before now if you do need to add any other diagnosis you can click on add and from here you can either search for the diagnosis or you can choose from your favorites list so if I start to type in cataracts if I choose filter 
it's actually going to generate a list of ICD-10 or ICD-9 codes containing the word cataracts. I can also start to type in the actual diagnosis code. Once again, it will start to generate a list containing these three digits. Once you've found the diagnosis that you want to use, you can select and carry it over to the exam. Now for each diagnosis, you can add your own plan. So for my cataracts, if I want them to come back in six months and you're referring them out, then you can go ahead and type any notes that you'd like to add. You can also click on the ellipses button, which will show you a list of categories with some available plans. You can always select from there as well. Now you have the copy button which will allow you to duplicate a prescription. It will not carry over the plan. You have the delete button, your up and down button so you can go up and down the list. You have a Vision RX button which will allow you to add any additional prescriptions whether it's spectacle or contact lenses. You can also print this information out from the screen. You have the show history checkbox which will show any previous diagnosis and plans. This will give you a chance to see what was documented last time. You can also probably copy it forward to the new exam. You have the education button. You have the education checkbox which will allow you to provide any education to the patient. You can once again choose the delivery type. Uh, you can also use Medline Plus which will take you to the website and you can provide education from that website as well. On the bottom you have the procedure section. Any additional procedures that need to be added you just click on the procedure button and then from here you can highlight and select the procedures that you would like to add to this exam. You can also link a diagnosis or even a modifier to a procedure code. All you would need to do is highlight the appropriate diagnosis and you can also highlight the modifier. You would then highlight the procedure code and you would add it to the list. When I scroll all the way to the right you'll see that my modifier and my diagnosis is now attached. You have a reasons button which if there were any incomplete procedures this will give you a chance to add why they were not complete. You have the order button which will take you to an order screen and you have the PQRS button. For Medicare patients you can submit your PQRS codes and you can actually add them from the exam level which will transfer all the way down to the claims level. You have the exam recall reasons. The top is for your annual. The bottom is for any follow-up recall reasons that are needed. So if you want them to come back in six months, you can select the reason and then it'll give you a follow-up recall date. If the patient is being referred out to another doctor, then you can choose from the drop-down here and also the reason. If you made the appointment for the patient, you can also document the appointment date and even the time if needed. You have the to-do button. You have the to-do button which will allow you to send a message to any employees if there's any task that you would like them to do. You have the e-prescribe button which will take you to our vendor, Dr. First. You have the RX pad button which will allow you to prescribe any prescriptions. Which will allow you to prescribe any additional prescriptions. You have the add appointment button if you would like to add an appointment for that patient. On the left you have the timeout section. 
So when I click on the button, it will date and time when the exam was finished, also the total time. You can also document the doctor time and the counseling time. You have a status in the bottom here, open or locked, so you can lock an examination if needed. Now when you lock an exam, you cannot modify anything in the exam, however you can still view it. If you did lock the exam and needed to add anything to this particular exam, you do have the addendum tab, which will allow you to add any addendums needed in this examination. It will date and time when the addendum was added as well as who added this addendum. Now a new feature that we have is the unlock button. The unlock button will only allow the physician who performed the exam to unlock the examination. It will prompt you for a password which can be set up through File Setup Physician in-house. You have your signature date to the right which will be your electronic signature and the physician of course who performed the exam. It will also document the lock date of the exam. The next tab is the custom fields tab. There are 30 custom fields available. This is primarily used to add fields that are not available in the exam. This can be done through file setup exam and custom fields. The next two tabs are shared with the patient profile as well. The files tab will allow you to attach files to any patient. It will separate by category. You can also add descriptions to the attached files. You also have a lock checkbox for individual files and a lock all button as well. Now with the interactions tab, anytime that the exam is opened, it will date and time when it was open and who opened it. You can also add any notes if you'd like to to the notes section. It is broken down to two subtabs, one being the interactions tab, the next being the messages tab. This will allow you to add or send any messages to any employees. You have several icons on the top of the screen. You have the coder feature. Now the coder will aid you in choosing the best procedure code to bill for any medical visits. You have the letters icon which will allow you to print or even email any letters such as exam summary letters, referral letters, or even reports. You have your equipment interface icon. If you do have any equipment interfaces, this is where you would go to to feed any information to the exam. You have the search icon, which will allow you to search for any existing exams. The patient profile icon, which will give you quick and easy access to that patient profile. And last but not least, the refresh exam icon. On the top, you have insurance information and the plan. Now this information will only be displayed if the information was entered through the insurance tab of the patient profile. You have your dilation section on the top which will of course time when the dilation was performed. You have side effects discussed and any pharmaceuticals that were used. You have the screen checkbox that is available. So if you do want to know who screened the patient when you check this off, it will document who was signed into My Vision Express and who screened that patient. That concludes our exam module in My Vision Express 2014. Please visit Support Central to view more video tutorials and how-to guides in our knowledge base. Thank you for choosing My Vision Express to accelerate your practice.